One photograph that I did of a woman in Ethiopia, she was at a, at some center there, I think it was a clinic or something, yes. And the whole area was brown, her clothes were brown, her face was brown, of course, and her hair was done in this kind of, uh, like the Maasai type hair, you know, with the mud and all that kind of stuff. The woman, I captured her, I took, she happened to turn her head and I took, whoop, like that, huh? and got her, and her neck was very long and all this. Suddenly, I looked at that woman, and I knew that I had taken her in a, at a clinic. She was probably sick, or a child was sick or something, I don't know. But, you know, I, that, that at the moment, that wasn't what captured me. I suddenly saw her beauty. I knew that uh, this picture it would just be representing an African woman, you know, in, at the clinic. But one day, after, after I, I, I had the picture for quite a while, I removed the background of the wall behind her. Because I saw beyond. It's being able to see, the art is seeing beyond the ordinary representation of something. You know, I look at you, and of course, you know, somebody will say, oh yeah, she's this, she's that, she's that. But there's that, ex, that's, there's that something else that I might see. And, um, and I think that's the art part. When you live in that part, you know, when you live in, the, in a ghetto, whatever ghetto that will be, you have to always contend with life in a very artistic way. You know what I mean? In the sense that sometimes you really have to deal with, you know, stuff in the daily life. You go to school and you didn't have breakfast and you're really feeling you didn't have breakfast not because out of choice, but because there's no food at home. So you go to school and you're hungry and you're not as strong as other people. You know, you're not as you're not feeling, you know, uh, um, uh, powerful enough. And you're there and maybe you were not even able to do your homework last evening that the teacher had given. And so you go to class and the teacher is asking you about and you have to give you have to craft a nice lie. Now, I don't think it's a lie at that point because it's, 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 a matter, it's a matter of life and death. I mean, seriously. So you have to look for a way of not embarrassing yourself that, you know, I, have no, I haven't eaten for two days and now what am I going to do? But to find a way of dealing with the fact that you have to have some punishment for not doing homework. So you start becoming an artist from a very early age. You start learning how to deal with the realities of this life because I think that is what art is. It's being able to respond to stimuli, to pressurizing situations, to very uncomforting scenarios, and being able to make sense of all of that and coming out of it in one piece. I think art has shaped the way I think, it has shaped the way I do things, it has shaped my life. Um, because as an artist, you are forced to look at life critically. Well, you're forced to look at anything critically. When you write a poem, you're writing a poem about a tree. It, it stops just being a tree, you know, just a tree with a stem and roots and leaves. It, it starts talking to you in a different way. So you start looking at it critically. What is a tree? What does it do? How does it relate to the environment? How does it relate to other trees? How does it relate to human beings? How does it relate to the skies, to the clouds? You know, how does it, what, what is it? So as a poet, you start relating with things at a deeper level than just what you, you see. And that what, that's what happens to, to, to all the arts, whether it's, it's a poet, a playwright, a musician, a, a dancer, that's, that's what you do. So it allows you, it gives you a critical thought, and for me a critical thought is an analytical thought. So art has specifically allowed me to have a very critical thought when I'm looking at issues, when I'm dealing with issues, when, whether I'm writing a poem or I'm writing plays or I'm directing a, 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 a play that has been written by somebody else. I'm looking at what is being presented. I'm looking at it critically. I'm trying to redefine that critical uh, presentation of whatever it is that has been presented. So I think that is what art has done to me. It has given me a very critical method of, you know, of, of, of thinking. Of, of not just taking everything as it is at face value, but being able to philosophically engage with issues, with people, with situations, with scenarios, with life, basically. Uh, I guess art has brought feeling, emotion. It's brought uh, 
a way of um, expressing who I am and who my people are. As long as there's light and there's shadow, there's gray and black, there is some art into in it, um, a building, anything, anything can be deep. Really, I don't, I don't know how to explain this to you. Um, uh, yeah, I'm trying to say that it's all in the eyes of the beholder. I mean, there's nothing better in the world than being an artist. It's life is made for you um, to see and to enjoy and to appreciate and to translate that so that other people understand what is around them and the beauty that is all over or everywhere, I think. Uh, I think art is a, is a way of earning some living, but uh, still you can take it in, into two ways, like uh, performing and uh, on the other side, it is like uh, trying to, to keep some youths busy because uh, you know most of the youths in the, in the ghettos, because I come from the ghetto and where is where I grow from, I've seen a lot of youths doing bad things like thinking of using drugs and uh, stealing and just sitting idols. So if I, we try to talk to them and show them that ah, instead of just sitting idle here, why don't you go to the industry and try to look for jobs? They say that they cannot get jobs there. So we try to show them that it's, it's not, it is not a must for them to go to the industry and get a job. They can still train something, like even drawing, or even dancing, or even the acrobat, and uh, it can help them. So for me, I think art is something that someone can depend on to survive. Oh, are you? No, no, difficult question. So, so what is it after all? I don't know. I think it's, I mean, there, there are very many layers to life. Um, and I think one layer is the layer where we think rationally and we try to, to make logical sense of, of life around us and to be creative in that logical way. Um, I think art is the part where you really cannot find the boundaries or the definitions, but it's still a way of trying to understand ourselves, trying to express ourselves, um, trying to be. So I guess art is, is about being a human being, art is about um, being alive, but it's being alive um, in the places where sometimes words are not enough. Maybe that's why we write songs, maybe that's why we paint, maybe that's why we dance. So it's trying to find expression beyond, I think, things that are obvious. I think that's, that's art, or one of the ways in which one can define art. So who am I? You know, who is Joy the human being? And I think art is one of the things that allows me to understand that, or to find that, or to explore that. So yes, I think it connects. So it connects me to myself, and then I think hopefully in that connection begins to connect me to my environment. Connections, I think, are made because you start with a picture that is in your head, you know, it's, it's just in your head. Nobody can project in your head, no one can see what's in your head. And, and the next thing, it's out there and it's in somebody else's head and they've retranslated it. And I think, I think that's interesting because I don't know what else can put something else in someone's head like art can and allow them to take it and make it their, their own, reread it um, in their own, their own way. For me, art is, um, Everyday life, really. Everyday life is, especially here in Zanzibar. I look at people, especially women here in Zanzibar, the buibui. Um, the way they put together their buibui, the way the jewelry, the henna, the way they walk. Because sometimes when you wear a certain garment, they walk, they walk differently. Um, and to me, that is part of art. You see the way people build their mud huts here. It's, artist, it's, it's something, if I take that to England or to Europe, it would be put in an exhibition, a mud house from Africa. Um, so here, it's, it's not pigeonhole. It's, it's everywhere and every day, and people doing it every day. The way people talk, to me, the way people communicate, the way people express, not only through uh, what they talk or how they behave, but even culturally, socially, I see a lot of art in that.
what I'm seeing has a certain expression. It doesn't have to be realistic. It can just be a stroke. But when I see the stroke, and as I talked before, a stroke to me can be flat, but I'm seeing the other side also as a sculptor. I'm thinking, how does it look if you do it this other way? So what I'm seeing is not exactly what you're seeing, but I'm also thinking that if we are to do it this other way, it becomes art to me. It's what I get up to, to do and to be, actually. Um, I, uh, through the work that I create, I, it's almost like that, that was what I was put here to do. Is, is in the way of a, a dialogue that I'm having. Um, I, I, I find a very important part of my artwork is what people say about it. It's, it's something that I'm saying and then people look at it and they, they give me their feedback. Um, the whole creative process I find very magical. It's something that's a gift that I was given and which is, is always full of surprises. I never know what I'm going to wake up to on any given day. And each piece that I start has its own, no matter how many times I've started and finished my works of art, each one is unique. Um, um, and then um, there's also the aspect of the, the whole physical process of sculpting. It's something that takes a lot of energy, especially the, the more physical aspects like carving working with a material that is resistant in some sense, but which you, you don't overpower, you sort of allow it to say what it wants to say. So it's kind of like you're dancing around your material. It, if, if you push it too far, it breaks. And if you allow it to sort of tell you what it wants to say, because I don't work from sketches, I don't do models. For me, the idea is translated directly into the material. I'll start off with a concept and then I will go to the material that I have chosen for that particular concept. And then from there, it's sort of like a free-flowing exchange where I'm, yeah, I'm as surprised at the outcome sometimes as, as anybody else. Um, I get people telling me, how did you make that happen? How did you make that happen? And I really don't know. It's, it's, um, it's almost a mystical experience sometimes where I feel like I am a... I am a tool in the hands of something greater than myself. Um, and it's as much a, a journey of exploration for me, making an artwork, making a sculpture, as it is, you know. Um, you know. Th there's the, the element of where I'm in control to some degree, because I am deciding what I want to say. But there are moments when I get lost in what I'm doing, and I sort of resurface hours later and I go, wow, did I do that? which for me is a sort of part of the endless fascination of the whole process of being creative and art making. Art is being in that other space that is not here, that is a bit above reality. It's still based in this world, but it's just a bit above reality, being in that other space and that other time that not everybody thinks about it every day but you're providing something that is a bit different. Of course, uh, the same, uh, it is based on reality, but it's just a bit, a step forward away from reality and uh, to the world of imagination. That's, that's, the, that's the space and, and, and the time of imagination I'm talking about. To me, that is art. In art, you, can, you are free to go out of the box. The life always have as a box, kind of a box that, and, and principles you have to live within. And uh, when an artist takes a, a, some chalk to put into some canvas on some paper, he's now free to get out of that box and do something else. He can draw somebody with three eyes. It's not normal to, to have three eyes, but he's free. He's free at that time to do anything he wants with this pencil. Or with this, with this charcoal, or with this chalk, a form of uh, coming out of a shell that 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 everybody wants to be in, 
Uh, I think the society has really put us in, in a position that we all are expected to be in some sort of a cocoon, uh, locked, locked up. Uh, but for, for me, art has been able to bring me out in, into the open and be able to say what I want to say, when I want to say it, and how I want to say it. So for me, art is freedom um, of, of uh, expressing myself, of uh, um, getting to know what people think and say about me, uh, you know, sort of like getting feedback. And it is, it is two-way because you cannot, you cannot be an artist without an audience. And for me, the audience in the art is also very, very important. So it's, 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 it, it, it serves as both sides. Uh, in, in the cocoon, you need to come out of the cocoon. But once you're outside that, you need people to see you and see how you have managed to come out of that small shell that you are in. That, for me, is art. I think the thing is always truth for me. It's not posturing, it's not trying to pretend, it's when you, you do your best. So the writers that I admire most would be all people I think I understand quite well on paper. I would never have met them, but I understand well on paper how they'd react to things because that's what happens. It seeps into your writing, it seeps into your worldview. Your worldview seeps into your writing so that when you presenting that, you just, you just try and present it in as truthful a manner as you can. And so for me, art means truth. Art mm -hmm. is life. It's an irresistible force in us that makes us want to be shared, want to share through, through our activities of our hands, our eyes, our, all our limbs of creativity. It's, 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 a, it's an effort in communication, but creative communication. And then you see, it's something that is important for our daily life. You see, art is not a thing you put it somewhere and then go to worship. You know, it becomes an idol. And also, it leads to materialism that cuts it from the organic relationship with the people who created it. Well, it even starts from arts and crafts, you know, they, 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 they create a carpet, beautiful carpet to sit on, to get married on, to sleep on, you know. You create a beautiful stool on which you sit your nice bum, you know, nice and round, and you put decorations on it, so they when you look at it, it's beautiful too, to look at. And then you, you create a painting, a portrait perhaps, of your loved one, and of course, uh, it's kind of like paying tribute to God's creation, you know? And then you, you, you paint a flower, you do things. All the things around us that attract us, they, 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 they kind of cause us to celebrate life. And that's art too, the celebration of life around us, you see. Art is how you react to society, how you react to your own life how you react to everybody around you at, a, at something much more than a superficial level. What lies behind the spoken word, your own action or the reaction of the person against you? What is it that is the real motive behind that action? When you are making creation, you have to think about the society involved and people, how the people are, and why to, you start asking yourself questions. Why is this happening? And normally it's the way like you want to stop something not to happen. So you forcing you to, to, to take action. And sometimes you feel like I don't have weapon, I don't have something to stop, I don't have any energy. I'm not authorized to stop this thing, but I have to cry about it. I have to take it out, and it's where you get in the creation, and then you think uh, maybe I will give it out, I will speak out, I will bust out, so people could hear, can hear me, and who are responsible? Maybe they can stop something. I transmit all things they have, all the life they have, into my my, my body, and I give out in the way of dancing. I express what is happening through the body and the feelings from the body, from the society. 
coming out in my body. I, it has given me a forum to make me be heard and to make me understood somewhat, right? Well, I could not be, I don't think I want to be a politician or a preacher or somebody really, a public figure spreading some kind of message. All I want is for one or two people to really hear what I am talking about because as a person I get affected by different situations yeah, in the country. But since I don't have the form of being a politician or whatnot, poetry is my form of being heard. I just have a voice and I do not want it to be suppressed and so I will speak through poetry. So art has made me vocal, if I can say that. Those, those, those things that I won't do in a normal setup, when I am on stage, I can really do them. I'll give you an example. For example, if you meet me, let's say, seated somewhere and chatting, I'm not that vocal, but meet me on stage. Give me that character that requires you to be like the explosive guy in that group. Well, I'll give it to you. So to me, the transformation from the real setup, normal setup of life, to the stage, this world where people say it's the world of big belief, it's sort of uh, out of this world, where you can say anything, you can even abuse your, your president, and they say, no, he was just acting. There, I'm normally very safe, and I feel like I can do anything. So to me, art sort of empowers me, it sort of you know, makes me 10 times more powerful than I am. I think my art is the most important thing in my life. So it means a lot because it, it gives me my, my source of income, you know. It's always ready for my expressions, you know. So I give art an opportunity in my heart that I can express whatever I think or whatever I learn from other people. So it is my river or the outlet of what is within me. So I'm no, no longer a shell. I can break the, 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 the feeling and show it to other people through the art. So it's a source of communication in a way. I'm sorry to say this on a, in a camera, but uh, uh, myself, I don't have a family apart from my daughter. Although I have parents who have so many kids, and because I was struggling so much, nobody sided with me or supported me as an artist. In fact, I, I became completely destroyed. And so therefore my art again is my family. It's my brothers and my sisters and my mom and dad and my, my, my father. So even just looking at this, of all people, it's a statistic to me. Looking at the way you're holding your, the camera, just the shape of your hands that could hang on a wall somewhere as art that could be put into words and will sell, sell as poetry if I take that camera to be holding a child or holding a bowl of cereal or holding a man who's just been shot the way you're holding and that is art Already, and we look at people's eyes, and at times, just the way their their eyes are shaped. I mean, I could just take that and frame it, because that's art. So, I think once you're in tune with art, you just see it everywhere. It's like you can play with colors, and colors can be so vibrant. They can be so low keyed. Color can be in all moods. Yeah, so you can use colors to just express those emotions. And then there's the form. You know, there are forms that are interesting or you, you may want to depict them in a certain way. So it's an all-encompassing kind of search to fulfill a creative need. But I'm still looking for the answer. <laughs> I haven't really, you know. Yes, art is, is the a right expression of oneself which touch the heart you know when someone doing something that will go and penetrate in somebody's heart and touch it that is really art that's how I see myself I know every time I'm on stage I want to reach people's heart not only to make them move or 
dance, but also to touch the heart. So that's how I, I, I define art. Yeah, because every time I'm on stage, I see all people of all races, they come to one, one vibe. Like, the race feels equal and dance and move and I see that's, that's wonderful. No, I don't want to try another other, other job mm -hmm. uh, like music. My life, my blood in music. <laughs> and I feel uh, humans keep trying to limit themselves in, in, in terms of identity, in terms of uh, um, eco economics, in terms of social status, in terms of polit politics, it's always boxing, 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 boxing and labeling. And you can't box me, you can't label me, and I'm sure there are other people that you can't box and you can't label, and everything is interlinked, always interlinked, always layered. So once you step out of that, then mentally you can go to a totally different space. And that's what I find is the spiritual part in it for me. And people find that, that spiritual release in other things, in religion, I mean, in other things, and I guess I, I find it in art. The urge to create, I don't know where it comes from. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's another way to, to remain immortal by producing work it will always be there even after you're gone. Also had some influence in me, in the sense I could see paintings done 400 years ago, and to me it made more of a statement about the person, as opposed to a gravestone. Yeah, everybody's born, everybody dies. And many, um, many who, like in history, what people read about, Usually ended up doing shocking things to people. So art is another way to maybe leave a good a good legacy. What does art mean? I don't know what art means. No, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know what art means. That's what I can say. Art and myself. I think I'm still on the on a on a, on a journey, and it doesn't have to end now and I'm and I don't have to know what it is and I can continue on the, on the journey and not know where it is I'm going but I'm happy on that journey that's what I can say very happy <laughs> on this route that I've taken I'm Filda Njau. My name is Bantu Mwaura. My name is Mombi Kaigwa. Uh, Andrew Jeroke. John Washika. I'm Joy Mboya. My name is Judy Kibenge. My name is Farouk Abdila. Kevin Odur. Gakunju Kaigwa. My name is Tony Mboyo. Jack Omondi. Rekia Elimo. Robert Ingoroma. Amy Ongaso. My name is Joel Godia. My name is Tabitha Waduku. Caroline Dirito. My name is Elizabeth Waterson. It's Jiko Manika. I'm using Art's name as Jiko Man. I'm Miriam Sylvia Kambi. My name is Patrick Mukabi. My name is Justice Chalo.